Welcome to Crossing the Threshold, where we identify, look at, discover, talk about ideas that are within my mind that are on top of my mind so that you might be able to learn and get some value from them. The reason I'm bringing up today is I just had a conversation this morning with an individual and we were talking about travel. He said he travels 250,000 miles per year and I said, well, I travel about 300,000 miles per year. And he said, oh, I hate it, it's horrible. And how do you deal with the, uh, the jet lag? And I described to him my process or the, the tool that I use to eliminate jet lag. And he said, I never thought of it that way. I never thought of doing that one little thing that you had defined. And during our interview, during the process of discussing it, he, he often would say something and I'd say, all you need to, need to do is make this little shift. And if you make this little shift, you can get large returns. And I kept on bringing them back to the travel. So let me share with you this travel solution so you don't get jet lag. While at the same time, so you can learn about that, at the same time, you could start to understand how you might be missing an element, a step, a phase that will help you to be able to move yourself forward in your life no matter what you're trying to uh, create. This is how you stop jet lag. And the important thing that I want you to remember is it's already too late by the time you go to sleep to fix the jet lag. Everything you've learned about jet lag is already too late. Jet lag or solving jet lag has three different phases. Phase one is pre-plane, phase two is on the plane, and phase three is post-plane. This is how it works. Phase one requires you to analyze where you're going to go, figuring out what you're going, where you're going to go, and then do certain steps to make sure that the next phases fall into line. It is this. First of all, when you are going to travel, look to the destination you're going and say to yourself, I need to get on schedule, especially long flights, so that when you get to that on the plane, you can convert to that destination. Let me give you an example. Let's say, and I'm going to give a simple one for the math for me today. Let's say you are in New York and you're going to Hong Kong. There's a 12 to 13 hour time difference. If the plane leaves at two o'clock in the afternoon US time, let's say out of Newark to Hong Kong, you would then know that it would be two in the morning. Well, two in the morning, which mean, you means you'd have to be tired. So part of phase one is to stay up later or go to bed earlier or shorten your time zone in sleeping so that when you get on the plane, you're not as tired. What I do is the night before I leave, I will stay up till two, three in the morning and I might get up at six. That means I have a shorter sleep, I get some sleep, but I'm already getting tired before I even get to the plane. I've started to move into the jet lag elimination mode. I also make sure that I bring with me certain tools. I have earphones that I bought from an audiologist, ear, earplugs, that I put into my ears, not the Bose system, they're very difficult to work with when you're sleeping because they're in the way and if you push on them too hard, they give you a loud sound. What I do is I went and I got earplugs that fit into your ear from an audiologist that are used for people who work in noisy environments or people who say sleep with someone who snores or sleeps with someone who has uh, the noise is very loud and they fit comfortably in your ear and you can wear them for hours. They fit snug inside, not like those yellow or the earplugs that you can get at a normal store. The other thing I've got is I've got a great mask, a great eyepiece so that they, it's comfortable, not those bands that they give you. It happened to have been from Lufthansa. I was in first class and I got this really cheap. I mean, nothing expensive, you could buy them, but it has a Velcro single band that fits comfortably around me. I then do what I say, I stay up late, I get my time compressed. When I go to the airport, 
I have a meal before I get on the plane. Why would I do that? Because when I get on that plane, I need to be going to sleep. And what often is very funny is, I think people get confused that the air travel is not about the airplane. It's about the destination. I really don't care about the airplane. I mean, I want them to be comfortable. I want to have good movies and things that keep me entertained. But it's not about the vessel, it's about the destination. That's why I love travel so much. I love getting to these new locations, seeing, learning, experiencing life. And if the plane is gonna cause me jet lag because I'm going to stay up, I'm gonna forget the plane. I wanna make sure that I'm comfortable and get my sleep I need. So what I do is I have that meal, I'm ready to go, I get on the plane, and the minute I do, because I do travel a lot, I often have in currency, I will swap out my money so I have the currency that I'll be using in that location. I take my watch and I set the location for that watch of the new place. And I say, I'm now in Hong Kong. I'm on the plane, I'm in Hong Kong. My money's changed, I've eaten. It's now two in the morning. I also take out my blanket because they give you a blanket. I take out my earplugs, I take out my headset. I don't even look at the movies. I'm not gonna get served a meal. I don't care if I don't have a meal. I've even brought with me protein bars and food that I can have in my bag so that I can eat if I miss the meal so that I'm all ready. I sit down in the, in the seat, no matter if it's uh, first class, business, or coach, and I do them all, and I wait for the plane to take off, and the minute the plane takes off, I put down my eyepiece, my earplugs are in, I close my eyes and I have set a time in my head that I will stay asleep until and it will be seven, six or seven hours. Six or seven hours, oh well, six, seven or eight. Normally at this time, if I go to bed at two o'clock in the morning, I would consider that a late night in Hong Kong. So I might sleep till eight or nine. I then look at my watch and say eight or nine. I then close my eyes, no matter if I fall asleep or not, no drugs, I do absolutely no drugs. And I often will sit there for a half hour, 40 minutes, and I will not move my head, I will just relax, calming my body so that I get that sleep out of my system. And I, and I know it's making me feel better. And the funny thing about keeping your eyes closed for that long, you fall asleep and you wake up like three hours later and go, oh wow, I just slept for three hours or four hours. Don't forget I was already tired from the night before. I, I then, when it becomes the time, I might have to go to the bathroom, I go to the bathroom, I come back, go right back to sleep, put everything back together. I then wake up when it's time. I fold my blanket, I have coffee if I need it, I sit up a little bit more, I watch movies. I'm not a good work on the plane guy. I don't do a lot of typing and those type of things. I watch a few movies, I've seen all the movies that are out there, and I get ready for the land, but I do not go to sleep again. Now, I know people say, well, I, I get tired again. There's a good thing. If you're going to, fall, going to fall asleep, fall asleep about a half hour to an hour before the plane does land, like a nap. What's good about that is they will never let you stay on the plane. You're going to be kicked off that plane. When that plane has to land, they wake you up and they make sure you get off. You then get off the plane. Now you're in location. We've already changed. You're already now, you've moved your... Um, you've moved your challenge of time adoption onto the plane where you really don't get the value. You get the value that you don't have, you're not doing anything, no meetings. The last phase, phase three is in location. Once I'm there, I will stay up and I stay up that whole day and I stay up and even when I'm tired, I make sure to go walking, I do something to keep myself alert. I go to meetings often, I'll, I'll land, I'll go to a meeting. I'll no challenge, I'm fine. I then will stay up until about one or two in the morning. Why so late? I want to cause myself to be hyper tired. If I go to bed at 10, I'm going to wake up at four. Now I've got a jet lag issue. If I go to bed at 12, I'm going to wake up at five, jet lag issue. But if I stay up to one or two, my body now will react and it will allow me to get up about eight or nine. So I've gotten a good five or six hours, but I'm on schedule. The next day, about five o'clock, uh, you know, I might get a little bit tired, but I'm able to get through it, full day, and people know me. I go dancing the night I arrive, I go out with people, I have fun. I make sure that, it, uh, that I'm keeping myself active. And that, no matter where you're going, east, west, north, south, 
If you're traveling for a living, you don't get jet lag. Let me share with you this. My wife said to me, ah, she's, she was on the plane, she's not gonna do it. it. Took her three weeks to get over jet lag. And I know people, it takes one, two, three weeks to get over jet lag. She's never not done the methodology again. And she says it works like a charm. Everybody I've taught this to has said it worked. For you, it will work too. I'm coming full circle. You need all three phases to make it work all three steps, you need all the right tools, you need all the right thinking to make this work. When it comes to the challenges you're facing every day, if you're just missing one, you're going to get jet lag. Or if you're just missing one, you might stay, have to stay later at work, deal with challenges that you're facing. You might not get the desired outcomes you want. So take two messages away. One is about the work environment, but the other one is you don't need to have the jet lag you're getting. You might be tired, but save your body. It's too late if you wait till when you land. Change it and you'll win. So that's my crossing the threshold for today. I hope it helps. Okay, I have to add this. Veronica just said I needed to add a piece, which I've talked about with her, to add to the crossing the threshold. So we're not completely done yet. I thought I was done, but we're not. The, the methodology works going east, west, going one way or another, it doesn't make a difference. You're deciding when you have to sleep because of the country that you're going to. The location you're going to is in that time zone. So if I'm leaving London and I'm heading to the States and it's a seven hour, eight hour flight, I might not sleep on the plane because I slept when I, before I got to the plane because of the time that it is in the States is a different, is the time zone. If I'm going the other way, I might sleep the beginning time. It's the same either way. You're moving it to a three phase, three step process that starts with an understanding of where you've got to be. And east, west, north, south doesn't make a difference. It just requires planning. Crossing the threshold, the addition. Talk soon.